Shalom Chavri, my name is Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live, and I don't guess I have to tell you that we have a special guest here this evening. And uh, we got a phone call earlier today, and to our surprise, we had Brother Paul Begley and his precious wife, Sister Heidi, here in Orlando, Florida. And we are so delighted to have Brother Paul here uh, this evening. We got to spend some time of fellowship. Very blessed uh, time indeed. And uh, as we were talking tonight, we, of course, talked in all kinds of subjects. We get a chance to be together. We have a lot, of, a fun. lot of fun. yeah. And uh, some of the things came up about Jerusalem, and especially with Jerusalem being in the news so much right now. Uh, you know, we know that uh, President Erdogan of Turkey meets with the Pope of Rome about uh, Jerusalem behind closed doors, 15 minutes there. And Brother Paul knows some things going on as well about Jerusalem that has not been aired anywhere in the world. So uh, Brother Paul is uh, going to be kind enough to share it here with Israeli News Live tonight. I think it's going to be a blessing to you guys. Uh, we're going to kind of just look into the things that are happening in the Middle East with Jerusalem. Who knows, might go somewhere else as well. Brother Paul, bless you, my brother. God bless you. It's great oh, to be here. Always, always great to be with you. you with Amen. Uh, so tell us a little bit, Brother Paul. We know that uh, as what we mentioned, we were talking about earlier tonight that uh, President Erdogan was meeting with the Pope of Rome. Right. It's over Jerusalem, and we yep. know that neither one of them are pleased with the fact that uh, President Trump has spoken about Jerusalem and said that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. You know, although he does, he does leave some concessions. He talks about keeping the status quo the same on the Temple Mount. Uh, he's trying to be sensitive to the Arabic community, and I know a lot of people try to think that he's not, but he is. And, uh, and I appreciate that about him as well. I personally have to tell you, Brother Paul, I would rather see, and I'm just telling you like it is, yeah. I'd rather see the Temple Mount the way it was 2,000 years ago. Uh, that's just a different thing. But again, as you know, Rabbi Yehuda Glick, he's, trying, he's always been an advocate for all people having a right to pray up there. Right. And it should be that way because... The, the the Arabic community is able to pray up there. Right, right. Why are the Jews or the Christians not allowed to pray up there? Right. And so, Pastor Paul, let's get right into this and uh, share with the people some things that are going on right now. Well, I mean, it's it's it was huge news when uh, the president made the declaration on December 6, 2017, that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Uh, he declared it and said, I'm going to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Now, that was already passed by our Congress in 1995 yes, it was. and declared that, Israel, that Jerusalem is Israel's capital. And President uh, Bill Clinton signed it into law, but then put a six-month stay uh, on it and said, just hang on, let's wait six months before we start the process of moving the embassy. And part of that was because Bill Clinton really wanted to do a Middle East peace agreement. And he worked very hard, as you know, with Yasser Arafat and uh, uh, Mood, uh, Barack was but, there. You know, there was a deal signed even back then, uh, Pastor Paul, and it was actually reported by Joel Bainerman, the late Joel Bainerman, an, an investigative Israeli journalist, uh, and even Barry Chamish also passed away. And Barry Chamish was a good friend of ours. Uh, he lived in Sarasota, Florida. He was an Israeli. He served in the Israeli military, fought in the Lebanon War, uh, and both of these men had discovered that while the Oslo Accords were going on, there were also secret meetings going on between the Vatican and the Israeli authorities wow. and, and the Palestinians, Yasser Arafat, about the dividing of the land, yep. specifically Jerusalem. Yep. And Yasser Arafat agreed, but he yes, wanted he did. East Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine. Yes. Rome didn't want to do this at first, but when the whole issue about the Third Temple being built on the Temple Mount not destroying the Dome of the Rock, which, by the way, Pastor Paul, that was a built for the Jews to begin with. A lot of people don't realize the Dome of the Rock was actually built by an Arabic man because he knew that the Jews would return home one day, and it was being built as a house of prayer for the Jewish people when they returned. But nonetheless, uh, they weren't looking at upsetting the status quo. No. But putting alongside the Dome of the Rock, which you know a lot of information about, yep. uh, putting it there. Yasser Arafat opposed until they were agreeable to allow East Jerusalem to be the capital for the Palestinians. And they agreed upon it. Yes. They did agree upon they it. They did agree. And matter of fact, they agreed. And then Yasser Arafat said, let me sleep on it overnight. They were at Camp David. It was an 11-day uh, meeting and negotiations. And when the morning came the next morning, Yasser Arafat said, you know, 
I need to have the whole, all of, all the land is Palestine. Forget the whole deal. And they had what, what they're right now crying for now was on the table. They had the deal. Yes. So here we are now. And uh, you have Rome involved. You have Turkey involved. And all of a sudden Trump makes his declaration. It, it, yes, there was a little bit of a dust up. People got to, but really, you notice it's been pretty quiet about this. This was a done deal. Jerusalem has been and is the capital of Israel. It's 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 a done deal. We've known it for 22 years. Finally, Trump, in the 70th year of Israel's existence, makes this declaration that it is time. Now, Pence just arrived there, and uh, he went. He just met with King Abdullah II in Jordan. And, uh, you know, they were talking Temple Mount. I mean, why go there, right? Yes. Uh, but we got some information that when he came from there to Israel, that he was scheduled to give a big speech at the Knesset. First time ever that a vice president would give a speech to the Knesset. And the night before, we got uh, Rabbi Yehuda Glick contacted Heidi. Uh, the reason he did is because I had asked him, I'm getting ready to take this tour to Paul Bigley prophecy tour we're coming to Israel this coming here yes October, October. and uh, what a year, year as well he, so. Stephen will be there oh my it's gonna be Zeb Parat it's gonna be there and and Rabbi Yehuda Glick we had asked him would he be willing to come on behalf of the Knesset to speak one night to the all the people who go on this tour and he contacted Heidi the night the same night that Mike Pence arrived and said, yes, tell Paul I will come. I'd be honored to come, and I will speak one night during that tour. And he said, and also, he says to Heidi, tell Paul, I'm getting ready to go meet with Vice President Mike Pence, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, a couple other lawmakers, and two, I can't remember if it was two or three rabbis and some other folks, so just let him know. Which is, like, why let me know, okay? Uh, not that they wouldn't be meeting, but just saying. What, what, what. He was dropping a hint for you <laughs> to be speaking about it. I, you know, I guess it could only go on an Israeli news channel, though, so it was appropriate. That, yeah, so I've been video. sitting on this. I've been sitting <laughs> on this. And uh, so I'm thinking, okay, I wonder why. Well, the next day, uh, Mike Pence goes and speaks before the Knesset. It's a great speech in which he confirms what the president has said about moving the embassy, but he gives now a timeline that the U.S. embassy will be moved late 2019. All right? So that's huge news. Yes. Then the next day, uh, Mike Pence, vice president of the United States, wants to go to the wall and pray. Now, to do that, they had to clear the whole area, security-wise, for four hours. There's no, nobody at the Western Wall and nobody on the Temple Mount. Nobody. And so as the vice president's going to there to pray, there's an, this is documented. It's either on Jerusalem Post or Breaking Israeli News. I can't remember which breaking one. Breaking Israel News. Okay. Yeah, Breaking. I don't remember which one wrote the article, or maybe they both have by now. But... There was one Israeli police officer who decided, you know, it's, there's nobody up there. Why not? So he went to find if there was any Jews, tourists that had come, that were standing behind the barriers. He just said, is there any Jews that want to go to the Temple Mount? And he got 50 Jews. 50, okay? And he took them up on the Temple Mount, and they got to go up there. There was no one there. There was nobody harassing them. And... They prayed up there, okay? And they're, so they're up there praying on the Temple Mount at the same time the Vice President of the United States is praying at the wall. This, I believe, was some type of prophetic moment, and I was sharing with that with yes. you. And it was. I was telling Brother Paul, because he was asking me this evening when we were talking about this, he said, there's got to be something there about it. I said, there is, Brother Paul. I said, Abraham, when, Lot, when, when, when the, angel was gonna, the angels were going to go down and condemn Sodom, before that destruction, Abraham is asking the Lord, who's there in a human body. Right. He first asks, if there be 50 righteous in this city, will you spare it? 50. For the 50. And I believe this is exactly why he chose that 50. And to this day, Brother Paul, in Israel, day and night, because Abraham gets all the way down to the number 10. 10, yes, yes. And he asks the Lord, if there be 10 righteous, would he spare the city? And the Lord says, if there be 10 righteous in the city, 
I will spare it for the sake of ten. But there wasn't ten. There wasn't ten. That was the whole point. So to this day, the rabbinical community always has ten people, day and night, 24 hours a day, praying at the Wailing Wall. Wow. Trusting the Lord that He will actually spare Jerusalem from being destroyed. So if you've got the ten that are always there praying day and night, asking the Lord, please spare the city of Jerusalem, then, then this one... Uh, Jewish Israeli police officer who goes and gets 50 whether he knew it or not exactly <laughs> he, he, it's as if it was a confirmation this city is protected by God it is spared it is the city of our God the city of the great king it says yes. I believe in Psalms 48 and uh, also it says that uh, people will be coming from all nations to Jerusalem to worship the king and the keep the faith uh, the feast of tabernacles so jerusalem you know look let's face it, it, it it's going to be a cup of trembling yes it's going to be a burdensome stone for people all the people a lot of people but uh this 70th year there's something going on that's unbelievable as these are huge milestones that have been taking place well you know brother paul when we look at the prophecy in micah chapter four i believe it is When Micah talks about the remnant returning to Israel, he says that the halt and the lame Mm. would return. These were your Holocaust Jews. They had just come out of the Holocaust, it would return. And he said, I'll be there with you even forevermore. All right? And then there's two things I want to bring out about this. But then he says, why are you in travail? Why are you like a woman in travail? Is there no king in thee? (laughs) <laughs> is there is the is uh, have you lost your faith perished? have you lost your faith yeah. have you given up basically right. so he said you will be driven out of the city and you shall dwell in the field now right. he does talk about the the migdal eder which is the leaders of israel to where because the leaders of israel you have very few leaders of israel that really recognize the torah implications now rabbi glick i think is one that does know the torah implications about this yeah you know, and, and, and even, you know, Prime Minister Netanyahu, there's been times I get upset with him because I see this, he's, he's really under a lot of pressure with Rome. But you know, Pastor Paul, recently, and I share this with you as well, there was a video that's been published now for several years, I think back in 2012, and the people were trying to use this against Prime Minister Netanyahu. And when I was listening to it, I realized they translated what he said incorrectly. They wow. were making it look like he was manipulating the United States people in order to get the support for what Israel wants as far as any two-state solution or a one-state right, whatever right. it would be. But then I recognize that they, it's not what he said. Okay. He's only saying that the, this, the American people are for Israel. Oh, they are. And then what really blessed me, though, when I listened to this, Prime Minister Netanyahu was talking about how that they're trying to force that two-state solution upon him, but there were he was given a little bit of leeway concerning the military application of it. Yes, it's indefensible borders. Right, and he's trying not to hand over Israel into the hands of a two-state solution that right. would take away the Jordan Valley, etc. So I really, the, the, though the people were using it against him, it was a blessing to me because it made me realize that Prime Minister Netanyahu though he may be under pressure from Rome and every other government in the world, right. he's trying to keep Israel, Israel together. together. He's trying. For, for the coming of the Messiah, yeah. for the prophecies to be fulfilled, he knows this is his generation, he knows this is supposed to happen, and then we're seeing things like this that, that, that you just shared with us there, that is happening there, where Rabbi Glick lets you know this, and it's for to get the word out. Yeah. Now he didn't say. Now Rabbi Glick didn't say that this event was going to happen with the fifty Jews on the Temple Mount. Right, or that. Right. He just wanted me to know that there was a meeting going to take place. Uh, it was just a, in his mind, this is an important yeah. meeting. I mean, you're meeting with the Vice President of the United States. He's but just this, been to Jordan. He's just been to Jordan. He just came from King Abdullah the Second. You know. And he's got the control of the Temple, Temple Mount. Mount. So there's something about that meeting, okay, that took place. We don't know what was said. What do you know though about the Temple, the Third Temple being built on the Temple Mount, Brother Paul? Because I know you have inside information on that as well. Yeah. Yes. From, and you've shared it before. Yes. On Paul Begley. Uh, on your YouTube channel, Paul Begley, yep. and also, you know, many other platforms that you work yeah. on there. I mean, uh, the 
interviewing Rabbi Huda Glick the four times I have, one of the things he said is, look, the blueprints have already been drawn up. Those were brought out actually by Benjamin and Yahoo when he first went in. Glick says, if you look at the blueprints, the temple we want to build is a modified temple uh, and it would set on the Temple Mount adjacent to the Dome of the Rock. It will not affect the Alas Mosque or the Dome of the Rock. The people can, the P Jewish people can come up there and could worship and there would be no outer court. There's no outer court, which is what it says in Revelation 11. Right. There will be no outer court. That's left for the tourists, for the Gentiles, the tourists, the Christians, he said, that want to come up. They can come and they can walk around and then they can pray up there as well and go to a museum they want to build so, uh, so that all people could go and learn about the history of Jerusalem and, and the Temple and, and the Temple Mount and all of its culture. When you said that, when you first brought that out on your channel, the first thing that came to my mind was Revelation 11. Yes, yes. Take that reed, take that rod, measure, measure the temple, it. measure that of court. There's your blueprints. They have them. There's the blueprints, blueprints. Is, in, is in Revelation. Although, you, we, as we know, Israel, a Jewish state, they're not looking at Revelation 11 no. to model this. No. But what they've done matches the prophecy of Revelation 11. And what they say, leave out the outer leave court. Leave it out. It's given unto the Gentiles. That's what it says in Revelation 11. And they're talking about in that area that's being left out for the Gentiles, building a library. So I guess that's Right. What it was. A library museum. Yeah. For... All nations. All nations. There's your Gentiles. Yeah, There's let them all in. Being left out for yeah, that. so yeah. it's actually prophecy. So sometimes I think Christians, they hear this and they'll say, oh, this is horrible. No, this is actually prophetically what was, pro this is what was prophesied to happen. Yes. And they now actually have those prints drawn out. So when you've been up there, uh, I've been up there, we've been up there together even. You walk around, there's, there's a ton of room up there. You can easily build the temple. That and a little a, olive grove that's in between, yeah, in between. the furthest part of the Temple Mount and the Dome of the Rock there that's going towards the uh, the place where Jesus was judged at Pilate's Hall. Yeah, near the, near there. And that would probably be the location. Yes. They would actually build and it it's not going to interfere with the Muslims who already come up there to pray during Ramadan or any other time they want to. So you could see that working as far as the structural grounds and and if you study Bible prophecy that's what they're going to do it doesn't matter if I like it you like it, or anybody it doesn't matter it says they're going to do it now will there be some turmoil will there be some scratching and clawing along the way yes okay and will there be a Psalms 83 war before or after a temple's built it depends who you want to ask. Ask Bill Salas, or you can go ask uh, Chuck Misler, or ask Stephen Ben Nanoon. And uh, everybody's going to tell you a different time that there's probably going to be a conflict, but they all agree there will be some kind of conflict f that, over this that issue. That brings an, a, a point, Pastor Paul, I want to ask you about. Because as I look at the situation that's building up right now in the Middle East, we have all the conflict going on with Syria. Yeah. Uh, Israel's concerned about yes. Iran and getting too close to the border or Iran getting weapons to Hezbollah. I do understand that. People are very concerned about Russia. Right. And the only way, Pastor Paul, that I could see that Russia would truly become a problem for, for Israel is if Putin is replaced. And I wow. say this, and I'll tell you why. Because President Putin, the first leader of Russia to actually build a Holocaust Tolerance Museum for the Jews in Russia. That's he huge. He made it a law, a law in Russia that it is illegal to speak anything against the Jewish people. Any that's an anti That's amazing. That put together. After World War II, that's amazing. Right, that he has put together for that. Uh, he's been very much involved with the Jewish people. Yes, he has. He has also, in the case of Israel, the third most spoken language in the nation of Israel is Russian. It's Russia. It's Hebrew, Arabic, then Russian. There's two million Russian two Jews million Russian that live Arabic. in Israel. Now, here's the part, Pastor Paul, a lot of people are not aware of. When uh, President Bashar al-Assad, mm -hmm. he was really getting upset because his military is being hit by the Israeli military that are targeting Hezbollah military convoys, etc., like that in, in right. Syria. So he finally tells President Putin, because he knows that Netanyahu is coming to meet with him, that if he continues to do this, we will target the Ben Gurion airport. Wow. But here's what people don't know. 
Putin said, you will not target any place in Israel. Wow, that's huge. You will have to deal with it, but you will not target Israel. And as well, Prime Minister Netanyahu had met with Putin beforehand mm -hmm. to let him know the problems that he was having in Syria. And he said, I need to be able to hit these targets. And he took the radar systems off of Israeli planes. And backed them off. And let them. And them that's why Israel is allowed to fly into Syria or Lebanon. From time to time, you'll see it. They'll fly in there and they'll blow up warehouses or blow up convoys of weapons that are moving. If the Iranians try to move, uh, because Iran's in Syria, okay? Yes. And if they try to move weapons uh, into Lebanon to Hezbollah, a lot of times you hear of Rush, uh, uh, Israeli planes flying in, blowing them up and going back. Israel doesn't talk about it. They don't make a big announcement. They do it. People accuse them. They say, we don't know. But, but everyone knows. The thing is, too, is he's even said that he told the Iranians, you cannot go anywhere near the Golan. Mm -hmm. He knows that they have helped it when it comes to ISIS inside the country trying to help Bashar al-Assad. The thing that I'm watching, although I don't agree with everything that Putin is doing, no. I don't like the fact that he allowed the Kurds just to get slaughtered up there in Africa. No. I was totally wrong no. on his part to do that. And I'm glad to see that President Trump is so far as standing his ground. Yeah, he's holding his to ground. The, to the Kurds that are on the other side. Because Erdogan told him to get his... We've got over 2,000 U.S. Special Forces there. Yes. And Erdogan said, you need to back out of the way because I'm going to drive the Kurds to the other side of the Euphrates. And Trump said, our guys aren't going nowhere. Right. So, in other words, if you're going to come through here, you're going to have to come through the United States. And exactly. Erdogan's kind of backed off. And, you know, Brother Paul, the one thing when we look at Syria in this whole Middle East conflict, the thing that I've tried to share with the people as well is that we have to remember as a Jewish people, especially not just Jewish, all of Israel and many of the Christians in America and Europe, etc., are no doubt descendants of the House of Israel mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And that is that in Syria, this is where all of our mothers came from. Mm. The mothers of Israel, whether it be uh, Leah, Zilpa, Bila, <laughs> or Rachel, all four of the mothers of Israel that make up the 12 tribes of Israel are all Syrians. Wow. They were all born on the eastern side of the Euphrates River, right where the Kurds are today. They're from this part of this land. Wow. And so many prophecies, as we were talking about recently, even on your broadcast, Brother Paul, even when we look at the fall of Damascus, the Lord is angry. He doesn't know. He knows that we do it in ignorance, and He forgives us for it. But He tells us that the fall of Damascus will also be the demise of Ephraim, Yep. The fortress of Ephraim will fall as a result of that, yep. which are the descendants of the house of Israel that believe Jesus' message that we find, what is it, in Matthew chapter 4, I forget exactly where it was, where it says that they brought all from Syria, came to halt the withered and the lame and everything, yep. and he healed every one of them. Healed them all, of all diseases. See, he didn't do them like the Gentile woman when he says, it's not me for me to give you the, to give, he, give the children's she bread said, and even, the dogs. And even the dogs desire the crumbs, That's right? right? <laughs> but when it come to them, when they Yeah, he came, healed them. He, he healed them. It. Yeah. All right? And so why? Because we're supposed to be brothers and sisters. And this Amen. is the one thing, Brother Paul, that I think concerns me the most is what's happening in Syria today. And it all started under Obama. Yeah. President Trump said that. He, oh, said I he know. created ISIS. He did. This, yeah, absolutely. You know? Obama's administration definitely created ISIS and empowered them by, pull, by giving a 14-month head start, telling them that we're going to pull out of Iraq, leaving all yes. of the hardware there. Yes. He empowered them. He supplied them, left $400 million in one vo bank vault in Mosul. The first city they went yes. and took was Mosul. Well, I mean, this was a setup. What prophecy did that get fulfilled? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. It was over in, uh, um, is it uh, Habakkuk? Or it's where God said that they would come down, Nineveh would be laid Yeah, Nineveh waste, would be laid waste. They would take all the Which is what happened. Gold. Which is, And they did. They did exactly that. Stephen, I've got another uh, prophecy I wanted to throw out here for you that's just driving me crazy. And I've been sitting on this, so I might as well break it on your show. I don't know why i got to do it all here. But uh, in, when you start bringing up Damascus, Isaiah 19, Isaiah 17 is the destruction of Damascus. Yes. Isaiah 19 is what's called the burden of Egypt. 
Yes. Okay, and we know it's sort of the Arab Spring. All these countries fall, including Egypt. We know that it says that in Daniel. Yes. But here it tells you that there's going to be a, a fierce king, a cruel lord would rise up, then he would be removed. We, I believe that was Muhammad Musi. Okay. Okay. He was trying to put in Sharia law and all that. And said that the reeds would draw, dry up, the river would get dry, there was a drought that hit the Nile, the economy crashed after mercy and all of that. And then God said, I will strike Israel, I mean e Egypt, I will smite Egypt, and then I shall heal it. Okay? Which, since they've gotten President Sisi in place, the first foreign leader to come to America when Trump was elected was Egypt's President Sisi. First one to show up the door. Okay? He absolutely, because he was rejected by Obama. Matter of fact, Obama wanted him arrested and mercy released. Now, here's what it says. Not part of the Muslim Brotherhood. I know, exactly. And who was close friends with uh, Muhammad Mercy was the Clintons since 1988. Personal friends. Okay? Matter of fact, Uma Abedin came from Mercy's connections there. All right? This is all tied in together. But, but here's what's the key. It says then, the Lord said, after he heals Egypt, in that day there shall be a highway out of Egypt into Assyria. Yes. And the Assyrians shall come into Egypt, the Egyptians into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. And in that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. Now this is a huge prophecy. Now it's been driving me absolutely crazy for a while. Well, I just found out that Putin has just signed a deal with the Egyptians and that is they're going to store huge, huge amounts of grain in Egypt. Okay? And where, where they're storing... Non-GMO grain. Non-GMO. The good <laughs> stuff. And then they're going to build a train track from the storage bins in Egypt to Russia. Well, I got on the map and looked to see, well, if you're building from the town there, and I don't have it on my notes here, but the town where the gr all the grain is to the town in Russia, you have to cut through Israel and Syria to go straight. It's a wow. straight shot. Amazing. A highway. Okay. Now, right now, if you and drove... And Turkey as well, correct? Uh, there, uh, no, I don't, think, I don't think you have to hit either one of those from... I don't think so. It just it, it, you know, the Red Sea's there. It right. just skims right. Or is that the Red? No, that's the Mediterranean. Well, that's right. That's right. The Mediterranean. You can follow it right up. Yeah, and it goes straight. It just cuts right through there. Now, here's the thing: to do this, you'd have to have those three nations in agreement. And Russia's going to get this grain. It's going to get. It's going to get there. Now, first of all, where did they store all the grain in the days of Joseph? Egypt. Egypt. Well, Egypt's a, the perfect place because of the dry, not very humid climate perfect to store grain, okay? Yes. Russia yes. knows that. The highway would have to cut through Israel and Syria, okay? So there has to be an agreement to allow. Right now, there are, if you drove, I, I went on Google to look and see, is there a way to drive a car through there? No. You can't drive a car from this, uh, from that spot in Egypt to the place in Russia. You can, you have to go all the way around Israel, all the way around Mount Elat, and then all the way back up. This is over 1,000 extra miles wow. to get to where you want to go. But if they can cut a train track straight through, this is what they're talking. Well, you and I were in Israel. We saw, we kept seeing these overpasses like, what is this for? Building all these new trains. What's all this train system for? Rail system being built right through, right past through Jerusalem. Right. There is a highway being built. There is a storage bins being done, and the deal has been signed already between Putin and the Egyptians, and, and, and all they got to do now is get Israel, and Assad's going to say yes, because everybody along this path is going to get some of the grain. As yes. it, okay. This is the highway. This is, the, this is it right here. And so we've, we're in the 19th chapter of Isaiah. Everything in this chapter has been fulfilled. We've watched it over the last seven years, literally since that Arab Spring. We've watched this come to pass right up until the highway. We're right there is where we are. And I've been saying, Lord, where's the highway? How's this going to work? We've got a war going on. I've been saying this. Yeah, we've got a war going on, but it's about ready to come to a, an end. And the, the healing, the blessing, the, and maybe the temple's part of this in the end. Why does Israel let them build this track? What do they get out of this? 
What did you Who know? signs off on right it? Right now, Israel is involved in a major campaign in the Sinai Peninsula. Yes, I know for an airport or uh, no, 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 that's not about taking out the terrorists inside. Oh, oh, the ISIS that is inside of the Sinai. They have been working oh, with good. the Egyptians. Good, taking out the terrorists in the Sinai Peninsula, and the Egypt has kept this low key because they don't want anyone to know about no. it. that they're working with the Israelis and the right. Israelis have been It's over the Muslim them. Brotherhood that's up there in in, in the they Sinai. It must be because of that agreement. And no doubt Putin has already discussed Because that's where Israel. that's where the tracks got to go. You know, you know the thing is, Pastor Paul. What what really gets me is you're dealing right now with President Trump, yep. President Putin. Yep. And regardless of what country they're coming from, both these men are taking a public stand for Christ as far as they far are as their own presidency. Yes, they are. And. I think that if you could get all the warmongers out of the way, <laughs> and all the dossiers out exactly. of the way, yeah, <laughs> uh, then, then we would then the whole thing would would really come. You know, we would end all this. And I think the other issue too, right now with Turkey is what is Turkey's big nose getting in the middle of all this? All over again? <laughs> well, Erdogan believes he's the son of deity. That's on billboards. They the only per, they don't ce they don't celebrate uh, birthdays. In the Islamic faith, except it's, except except Muhammad's and Erdogan's. Now, where does that put him on the uh, food chain? Okay, where did he elevate himself to? Whenever this uh, announcement of Jerusalem was made, Erdogan declared and called a Muslim summit. He called every world leader, all the Arabic nations, to come to Turkey. None of them came. Uh, Abbas is the only one that showed up, and a few representatives from a few. So he's trying to say, I'm the guy that's going to lead the caliphate. But none of the rest of the Muslim nations are buying it. They're not buying it. I don't think they like the guy. And, uh, but Turkey will play a role at the end of the day because they're a member of NATO and, and they're Islamic, yet they're, they're not radical Islamic. They're generally moderates. Uh, so Turkey probably plays a role in this. I don't know if Erdogan is the guy who signs anything, but... Well, if they don't do something about Erdogan soon, it's really going to mess. He's going to mess it really all up, yeah. Nation, uh, because he has really gone over. But the he's people. working with Rome. But that's the biggest problem right there, Brother Paul. I mean, we were sitting there on Israeli News Live. We did a broadcast yesterday, and the thing that I was sharing with the people there is what's ironic about his relationship with Pope Francis and with Erdogan is their. The, 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 the whole, if you go back and set to 70 AD, when the temple was, was destroyed and ransacked, the Romans to begin with were not doing so well. From 56 no. up to about 66, they were defeated. The Syrians were defeated. Everyone was defeated to try to take the Temple Mount. It was almost like the, the priest of that day were probably laughing at the prophecy that Jesus said, there will not be one stone left upon another because they kept winning the war thinking they were really doing a great job. Then what comes? Then come uh, uh, Titus is fine. Titus, yep. He comes down. He takes back the the Galilee. He does a circle all the way down. Takes out Judea. Goes all the way down there to Masada. He's coming back up, and then Nero dies. He has to go back to Rome. He appoints his son to come take his place. And as Obadiah says, Obadiah says about Esau, Rome. Uh, he says, "You are as one of them." Esau, I mean, Obadiah never says that, that the man that would, that would conquer Jerusalem and send the Jews into exile, that he was the guy doing the fighting himself. He said, you stood aloof and you were as one of them. Now, what did he mean by one of them? Well, we look at the historical side of Titus, and he began to recruit all of these nations that hated the Jews. And yeah. they were from modern-day Turkey. Yeah. There was a sheikh from up in that area there that hated the Jews. They were from Syria. They were from modern-day Jordan, mostly from modern-day Jordan and Saudi Arabia. And, of course, Turkey. And then from the coastlines of Syria that was closer towards the Lebanon side at that time. They came there, and then there was no way the Jews could overwhelm. They were overwhelmed. They were overwhelmed. Well, here's the funny thing, Pastor Paul. Same issue again. The Pope is angry over Trump declaring Jerusalem the capital. So is Erdogan. And Erdogan's already got all his thugs. And where are they from? 
Turkey, Syria, Jordan. So Saudi it's a Arabia. repeat. It's a repeat. We're seeing almost like it's all getting set up again. I'm concerned that what they're going to try to do, and I don't know if this is the case or not, I'm wondering, because it's a closed door meeting, nobody knows what's being said. Right, right. The, the Pope gives him a peace prize. <laughs> Okay. I mean, <laughs> after I don't know how many people. Uh, look, look, I mean, look after the, the coup, after the f false coup or fake yes, coup or what? Fake coup that they had. He there. slaughtered a lot of his own people. He imprisoned a ton of them. And look what he's doing to the Kurds there in Africa. Right now, this, he's bombing this poor the Kurds. Girl that they that they took. She wouldn't allow him to take her body, so she takes and blows herself up, just like the Russian pilot. Right. I mean, he was a her heroine. Right. The guy goes. He down, fought him. And then when he's seen he was going down. Pulls the plug on the, on, right. the, on the grenade and blows himself up. Yeah. And, you know, our condolences to his family. Uh, but the, the really condolences to the Kurdish people as well. Oh, yeah. Been so much, Pastor Paul, because they have always been, they love Israel. Yeah. They're the one, if anybody deserves a right to, to be a part of the Syrian nation and the rebuilding. And as, or Kurdistan. Make it Kurdistan. Give them their own nation. You know, from the, they were trying to set up in northern Iraq. And they are from northern Iraq, and they're also from the eastern part, the far eastern part of Syria. They should be given their own place. They should. I agree. Yeah, they really should because they don't bother nobody. They're self-sufficient. And outside of Israel, they're the second most hated group of people in all of the Middle East. Yes. And part of that's because biblically they supported Israel. Yes. Uh, many, many years. You brought up a fact, though, folks. He brought up a fact uh, before we turn the camera on that I'm just excited about. I mean, Abraham, it was 1948 years from Abraham. When Abraham was born, he was, born, he was born from the creation of, if you look at it, uh, 1948. 1948 is the year he was born, if, yes. you, if you take it from the creation. I forgot all about that. Okay. Go ahead, tell it. I'll all right. It. Now, it is 1948 that Israel became a nation after, uh, in, in A.D., 1948 A.D., yes. okay? But what I didn't know, and you just brought this out, is that the, the first temple was destroyed in 586 B.C. by, of course, the Babylonians. And so this year is 1948. Well, in AD 70, when the second temple is destroyed. From 78, that's right, from the year 70 A.D. 70 A.D. till 2018. 1948 years. In fact, that'll be and it happens to be the 70. Yeah, in May. In May and right this May. Passover. And this May is the 70th anniversary of Israel as a nation. Also, the 1948th year since the destruction of the Second Temple. Exactly. And there's some exciting discoveries and things going on, Stephen. It's unbelievable. This thing is coming together so fast. So, if you're a Bible prophecy and you're studying Bible prophecy. You got to look and see that the things that Jesus said were coming are happening unbelievably. Yes. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, going to Revelation, going to Daniel. Uh, look, the little book has been eaten. The, the the book's been revealed. It's it's coming together. Unbelievable. Absolutely. Unbelievable, even. Absolutely, so. guys. We are so glad you got to join us tonight, Pastor Paul. Would tell the people about the tour that you're doing there in Israel this coming October. Uh, Lord willing, we will be there as well, uh, but you have a lot going on, mm. and how the people can register if they would like to be there as well. If uh, if you would like to go, the tour, the Public Prophecy Tour is October the 8th through the 18th, the 8th through the 18th, and uh, call the 1-800 number that uh, is on the screen, and, uh, and push option 2. Simply this, get registered to go. I'm only going to take 100 people. The seats are going fast, okay? Get registered. How do you do it? Just call that number. You put a $300 deposit, lock your seat down, and then you got till July 25th to finish paying, okay? So it gives you enough time to work on the funds. If you come with me to Israel, it will change your life. You're, number one, you can be baptized in the Jordan River. I'll be baptized in everybody that wants to be baptized. Take communion at the Garden Tomb. Take a boat ride across the Sea of Galilee. Uh, stand on the Mount of Olives. Go to the Wailing Wall. We're going to the Temple Mount. Uh, we're going to stand on Mount Carmel where the fire fell. Go look, look at Megiddo and look at Armageddon. I mean, this, uh, 
go to the Mediterranean. I can't remember everything. It's going to be a phenomenal. And Heidi and I sat down with the travel agencies and we made sure we put the best sites that you would want to go to really have an experience in the Holy Land. And we're going to go slow enough that you can shop in the little, uh, you know, along the way. We, we, we said, look, we're not going to rush the folks. Take our time. We're going to hit the good spots. And we're going to make this a very pleasant. And then we're, and you're going to have three great meals every night. Great hotels, top of the line hotels, three meals a day, all included, including your airfare from uh, New York to, to Tel Aviv and back to New York. Um, and at night, when we get settled after a long day of enjoying it, we will have dinner together and a keynote speaker every night, in which, Lord William, uh, Stephen Benanu will be uh, one of our speakers, as well as uh, Zeb Parat, as well as Rabbi Yehuda Glick as well as myself. So I think you're getting a prophecy conference in the tour. Just throw it in for free, okay? Just throw that in on it. So, that is awesome. Yeah, it is really. It's gonna, and it's the 70th year, so Stephen, this, this is not going to happen again. This is the most prophetic year to go to Israel. And I've had, we've talked to people all their life, said, you know what? All my life I've said I wanted to make, there's one thing I want to do, I want to go to Israel. Yes. This is the year to do it. Yeah. It'll be a blessing, no doubt about it. We'll get to see you there as well. Uh, you know, as Brother Paul wow. said, Lord willing, we will definitely be there. <laughs> uh, so again, Brother Paul, thank you so thank much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. A pleasure. Got a, got to hear a lot of things and, uh, and and some very interesting things that have happened uh, that Brother Paul's been talking about. Uh, check out his YouTube channel. Those of you that may not know about it, uh, also Pastor uh, Begley, your website is uh, PaulBegleyProphecy.com. PaulBegleyProphecy.com. God bless you. Thank you for watching. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.